Hello, um, today I'm just going to do a short video about vitamin D. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Michelle Clay. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I help patients lose weight and optimize their health and well-being. So today I just want to briefly review vitamin D and why it's so important for your health. So vitamin D you may have heard referred to as the sunshine vitamin. And the reason for that is because our it's actually created in our skin with exposure to sun. And it's really more of a pre-hormone uh, than what we normally consider a vitamin. Um, because when our bodies are exposed to sunshine and our skin creates vitamin D, then our body actually converts that into its active form, which is called calcitriol. And calcitriol is a hormone that helps our bodies to maintain our calcium levels in the body along with several other important functions. So as far as lab values go, um, to actually know your level you would need a blood test and typically this is covered by your insurance so if you've not had one of those done you could ask your provider to check that uh, the next time you go in. So you can see here the ranges vary depending on which lab you look at, but this is just kind of a generalized, um, you may see a little bit different numbers on your particular lab, but this is generally what you'll see. So if your levels are less than 20, that's considered a deficiency. Um, 21 to 29 is considered insufficient. Normal, you'll see I have quotation marks there, is 30 or above. Um, and I say normal because yes, that can be normal, but optimal and normal are not the, the same thing. So ideally for optimal health and well-being, I recommend patients get to around 60 or a little bit above. Um, and then I've got a toxic level there of over 150. So you can see there's a big range. You can go from optimal to toxic. And it's really difficult to be toxic just because if you have more of it than you need. Your body simply just eliminates it in your urine typically. So it's really hard to, to get too much. Now um, a lot of us are deficient um, but there are some people that are more at risk for deficiency. So um, people who are obese which is a BMI of 30 or greater are more at risk. It's actually linked with obesity so for my weight loss patients I always um, encourage them to take a vitamin D supplement. Uh, also, people who have dark skin or wear sunscreen, you may have normal skin, but you always wear sunscreen when you're out, or you're just a person who avoids sun exposure altogether. So if you just can't get sun, then you're, you're going to be more at risk for deficiency. And then the elderly. The older we get, things just don't work as good, and so that goes along with the vitamin D as well. As far as estimates go as to how many people are deficient, I've seen ranges from 25% of all Americans being deficient all the way up to 85%. And I don't know for sure the right number. Um, there's a lot of variables in that. But I do know from personal experience of all the patients I've ever looked at labs and checked their vitamin D, I've only had one patient that had a normal level, not optimal, but normal level that didn't take a supplement. So it is very common and very prevalent to have um, at least a deficiency. So some of the symptoms that uh, you can have with a vitamin D deficiency are, um, you know, pretty common symptoms that people may have that are kind of generalized and hard to pinpoint on any one particular thing. But they do include fatigue, poor sleep, uh, bone pain and actually bone loss. Remember I said it's connected with our calcium levels. So people with osteopenia or osteoporosis, this is a very important vitamin for them. Um, also postmenopausal women, we, you know, once you get to that age, you're not as good at absorbing calcium. And so it's important for that age group as well. Um, it can be a, a cause of hair loss. It's um, also vitamin D is necessary for the production of insulin. So if you're deficient, then you could have um, inc increased insulin resistance. And that may be what the association is with obesity because that, that's often linked together. Um, then it's very important for your immune system. So if you're someone who frequently has colds or you just can't shake things that normally you feel like you should be able to shake pretty quick, this could be a contributing factor. I know personally, 
um, once uh, the pandemic started, I started taking vitamin D religiously. I'd taken it off and on before, but really religiously then. And since the pandemic started, um, only because I've had to pay attention to it, I've not even had a cold. Now, I've had COVID twice, but I've not had a cold, knock on wood. And I really feel like it's got to be linked with, you know, having a really optimal vitamin D level. Now, other sources of vitamin D besides sunshine are fatty fish, uh, mushrooms, some fortified foods such as milk is usually fortified with vitamin D. Some cereals are also oatmeal. Eggs, in particular, the yolks are high in vitamin D. And then, of course, for most people, most patients that I've dealt with, at least, they need to take a supplement in order forever, you know, in order to maintain an optimal level. Um, a lot of times I see patients who maybe have been on vitamin D already, their level was deficient, they've been on something and their levels still aren't that great. And a lot of times I see that they've just been given or prescribed just vitamin D. And there's a lot of vitamins that they need a buddy <laughs> to work, work best and vitamin D is that way. It's a fat soluble vitamin so it doesn't need to be taken on an empty stomach. It's best to take it with food. And then the buddies it needs are vitamin A and vitamin K. So it's best if you're going to take a vitamin D that you have one that's a combination that includes A, D, and K and that you take it with some food. Even something with a little bit of fat would be ideal. Now, the specific amount you need uh, should be determined by your provider based on your lab test. But for most everyone, you could, you could safely take, you know, a 2,000 IU daily dose each day. So you can talk to your provider for guidance on that specifically for you. So I want to thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, just reach out.